Welcome to Book of Acts Now Global School and Global Church. We're glad you're here with us today. We're continuing our Hebrew class, learning the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And these are the building blocks of the Word of God. So we're going to be looking at Mem today, which has the M sound, and it means chaos or strong water. We're going to look at some biblical words that use Mem so we can get an understanding of how the writers of the Bible and God himself is communicating to us um, through the original language. How many know the Bible wasn't written in English? wasn't written in Greek? It was either written in Hebrew or spoken in Hebrew. And so we want to get an idea about the mem and how it's used. So join me. We're going to start with the word mother. Now the word mother is made up of two letters. And the way you pronounce it is M. So you have the Aleph. These two little dots are the E. And then the, the, the uh, Mem here has the M sound. So it is M. The Aleph has no sound of its own. It has to have a valve with it. And so it's E-M. Now, in this case, it means strong water. Now, why, why would they use the, the idea or the symbol of strong water with mother? Well, when a mom is getting ready to have a baby, what happens to her water? Their water breaks. And so it comes gushing out. That means the baby's coming. It's strong water. And uh, the interesting thing about this is the word mother is used as a root for other words, including truth. And so if you look at the word for truth, it's made up of the aleph, the mem, and the tav. If we cover up the tav... What do you see when you cover up the top? It's the word for mom. Yeah? So if you add covenant to the word for mom, you get truth. Here's why. The mother was the one who taught covenant to her children and made sure she was reading the Bible, reading the word of God to her children. And, and she was to watch over her home to make sure that her children learned about what it means to walk in God's word and to walk in covenant. And so, if you want to know what truth looks like, look for the mother who shares the word of God with her children and teaches them about covenant. That's what truth looks like. Wow! Wouldn't we like to have truth look like that today in all the homes of America? Amen. And so this is pronounced, again, we, we start with the E sound, M met. This here tab has a T sound. So, M, met. That's truth. Strong waters of the covenant. Now, anoint. Would you like to know what anoint means? All right, so we have um, the mem. This little T thing here is the A. And then this is the shin, the SH sound. The A again. And um, this looks like an N, doesn't it? But this is the chet, which is the CH sound. And so this is ma-shik. ma -shik. What does that sound like, ma-shik? Anointed or Yeshua HaMashik? The anointed one. So we, in English, we use the word Christ, Yeah. The word Christ means the anointed one. He is the Christ. And so the anointed, check this out. Strong fire surrounds you in the secret place. If you want to have the anointing of your life, you to get it. On your knees in the secret place. See, that's why Christ said to his disciples, go into your closet and close the door. And who's in the closet? Because your father is waiting for you. So when you go in and close the door and you spend time with the father, he is an all-consuming fire, is he not? So come on now, you're in the secret place with the all-consuming fire. What do you suppose will happen to the believer when they're taking time to do that? He's going to consume sin. He's going to consume those things that are not like him in your life. Listen, if we're struggling with things that we need victory over, we need to overcome, and y'all know we do have some things. 
we need more time in the secret place. But you know, in our society, well, I'll get around to it, or I'm working it out, Pastor, don't worry, I'm working it out. You're not working out anything. God is the one who works things out. He's the one who completes the work within us that he has begun. Philippians 1, six, And so, if you want to become like him, and you want to walk in the fire and carry the anointing of God and have an impact, there's no shortcut. You've got to spend time with the Father in the secret place. And while you're there, he may talk to you about some things. I was at a revival one time, and they told me, they said, Now, when you get prayer... If you wind up on the carpet during carpet time, you ask the Father what he wants to do. Don't just get up. You ask, are you done? You know, I was on the carpet about two hours one time. And I kept saying, Lord, are you done? No. I, I want to talk to you about your children. I want to talk to you about... He said, he said to me, the Lord said to me, why are you here? I said, well... I'm feeling some burnout, you know. The church is difficult. We've got these problems. And you know what the Lord said to me through the Holy Spirit? They're not the problem. It's you. He just began to open my heart. That's being in a secret place. Being real with God. You can, listen, we can't hide anything from God. He knows our secrets. He knows everything about us. He knows that you've been angry at your spouse. He knows that you've been carrying some things with people who have maybe been mean or done things to you, and you've just been kind of holding on to that and feeling justified for what you're thinking about that person, and God's like, uh-uh, no. If you want to be forgiven, you must forgive others. Yeah? And, and so if you really get into the secret place with the Father... He's going to lay everything bare. And sometimes we need that. How many know the heart is desperately wicked above all things and deceptive? We justify things, justify our attitudes. And what we need is time in the secret place. Now, that's not for punishment. You know, you, it used to be you get in trouble in the class, you stand in the corner. That's not what I'm talking about. God is saying, look, I want to work in your life and bring you more freedom. Come on in and sit next to me. Come on in. So he's welcoming us into intimacy with himself. It's not a stand in the corner thing. And so God wants to invite us into that place of intimacy so he can speak some things in our life. And it's not always going to just be about uh, dealing with repentance or exposing things. Sometimes he wants us to know who we are. How many know we need to know who we are and whose we are? And so when we're in that place, he can speak into our lives and say, why are you afraid of that? You don't have to be afraid of that. Just speak my name to it. I'll, I'll, give, I'll make you an overcomer. So those are the kind of things that happen. And then when we leave the secret place, come on now. We're bringing some anointing with us, and the strong fire that's in the secret place is now in me. If we want to see more miracles, people set free and people delivered, we've got to take some fire from the secret place with us. Otherwise, we wind up doing things because we think it's a good idea. Well, you know, I've prayed for people before like that. I can pray for them. You're, you're not going to see the fire and the miracle of God unless you've been with him. And how many know we leak and we got to be refilled? Which means we got to keep going back there. So you can remember fondly how the 20 years ago you were baptized in the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's great. But have you been filled this week? Because we, we have to walk in the fire, Amen. All right, the word for messenger. So this is a longer word, isn't it? 
So we have the ma'am here. Looks like a box, doesn't it? And uh, <clears throat> and then we have an A, and then we have the lamad, which is the L sound, which means authority. The aleph here means the father. And then we have, this is the suffet ending of uh, the chet. All right, so this is pronounced malach, messenger. Strong authority of the Father will surround you. And so we typically think angels as messengers, right? They're coming in the strong authority of the Father, amen? But can we also be messengers? If we're bringing his word and he sends you to do something, you're a messenger, and so you're carrying his authority. Now, one of the things that that I feel like we need to understand is that when God gives you authority to speak his word, you need to know the authority you're standing in. Now, we had a deliverance here this week, and we're going to have more. United called me, wanted to know if I'd bring, do deliverance for somebody. Maybe Walmart will call next week. I began to pray with this young lady. And her head came up and her eyes came wide open and I was I was looking into the eyes of a demon. That's not just for biblical times or third world countries. Listen, we've got a lot of people who are demonically oppressed today that need deliverance. But we've got to know the authority that we have. I said to, to that demon in Colossians um, Colossians two fifteen, it says <coughs> that he triumphed over them and made a public spectacle of the principalities and powers at, at the cross, at the tree. Now here, here anciently is what happened. If you have um, a leader, a commander, and he is defeated, and his army is defeated, they would march in front of the conquering king, the conquering general, and they would have to admit publicly that they were defeated and they were submitting to that conquering king. That's what Colossians 2.15 is saying to you. And so I looked at that demon and I said, you were there and you saw the Son of Glory die on Mount Calvary and you will admit you were there and you will admit you were defeated. You have no authority here, demon. You are defeated. You are bound. Now tell me how you entered. What is your legal right and authority? Tell me. Blood covenant seven generations back. We prayed with that girl. We had her repent. And then we took authority over that demon and we cast it out. But we, you can't do that kind of thing unless you know the authority that you have in Christ. And that you have his anointing and you know his word. If you don't know his word, you will not have authority over the enemy because your authority comes through the word. And, and so, Marge and I have been spending some time memorizing scriptures that have to do with deliverance. And there are four or five really important ones. Luke 9, 1. He called his disciples to him and gave them power and authority over all devils to cast them out and heal all diseases. Is that, in, is that a, a command for us? Yes, it is for every believer. Do you believe it? Another, another important text would be um, Acts 10.38. Mark and I have been out walking in the mornings, and um, this week, as we're walking, we're memorizing and quoting and meditating on Acts 10.38. Does anybody know what Acts 10.38 says? For God anointed... Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. All. Well, if we have the same anointing as, as Christ, should we be doing the same thing? Lord, I need that anointing and your power that I can go out and do the works of Christ 
and do good like he did, and I'll see everyone that I encounter that's oppressed to the devil, they get to come free. Acts 10.38. The people of God need to be armed. They need to know where their authority is and how to get it and how to walk in it. Amen. And then you'll be made a messenger of freedom. Come on. So the last word here is uh, tithe. You know what a biblical tithe is? That's what, um, in Malachi 3.10 it says bring all the tithe to the storehouse. A tithe is a tenth of your income that God says belongs to him. And so uh, each payday, we're to give uh, a tenth of our income to the Lord. So let's take a look at what the real meaning is of this word. Here we have strong again, the mem. What's this letter here? That's the I and means to see. And this is uh, the shin, fire, right? In this case, because the dot is on the left, instead of the SH sound, it has just the S sound, okay? And then we have the race, which is the R. May sir is how you pronounce that. May sir. And what does it mean? Strong waters cause you to see the fire of the highest person. So when you're bringing your tithes or offering unto the Lord, he's going to reveal to you his fire. This your part of participating in his kingdom, amen. So that's our review today of the men and uh, some things that we can meditate on this week and begin to walk in. We need the fiery authority of the living God. So let's, let's pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that in these last days, and I believe we're in the last days, we're going to begin to see the things of the book of Revelation. We're going to see judgment come. You're dealing with cities. We're going to see evil rise up to try to destroy the people of God. And we must have the fire and we must have the authority of the living God. So, Father, we pray that you'll help us to find our closets this week. That we can be there with the Father to receive the anointing, receive the fire, and walk in the authority of his word. Thank you for blessing us, oh Father God, today as we've learned these things. We pray in Christ Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah.